All right, welcome to the EW TV Insiders podcast. It is Friday, October 22nd. I am Dalton Ross, joined here with Michael Osiello. Hello. That's really <laughs> well. Very, very dramatic, very serious. Uh, Michael Slezak. Hey, guys. And Annie Barrett. Hello. <laughs> We got a lot to discuss. We are going to do a Project Runway finale preview. We're down to the final three. We're going to bring in our expert, Missy Schwartz, who has seen the final collections, and she's going to tell us who's going to win. We're going to talk Survivor, double elimination time, and Dancing with the Stars as well. We're going to bring in Ken Tucker, our EW critic, in one second to talk about Fall TV. But first, Michael Asiello killed poor little Sally Draper last week we got lots of angry people writing in about it guess what she's still alive I'm how still do we alive. know she's still alive <laughs> how do we know that final scene where don woke up he was like a little out of sorts and stuff how do we know in that moment his daughter didn't take her life and he was feeling some kind of energy you know and all honestly i did think for about five ten minutes that was a whole that was a dream sequence when don like you know, proposed. Well, basically. that I thought was a dream sequence. It was yeah. just seemed so out of body, the whole thing. Every time he goes to California, it's like a whole dream sequence. But I think you may have killed Sally. He may do it. He may go track I, her, that character I'm down. I'm happy she didn't kill herself. Just because I predicted it doesn't mean I wanted it to happen. But we were right on our other prediction that Joan, in fact, did not have the abortion. Yes. So we were one for two. So, you know, for that one, right? That felt nice. All right, let's talk about Fall TV. Ken Tucker is in the house, EW Critic. Hey, Ken. Hey, 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 how do you know? How, how are you doing? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> what an intro. Nobody's hepped up Boy, on that. What a debut, huh? Nice. <laughs> Fumfering right away. And still, that was better than Annie's debut. Uh, yeah, here's what I want to get right down to. It's been a weird TV season. We've talked about this a lot. Buzzless. Like, yeah, buzzless. Sad sack season. Yeah, like a, the new shows aren't happening. A lot of returning shows are faltering a little bit. So I'm just going to break it down. Question number one, Ken. What is the best show on television right now? If people can only watch one show, what is it they should watch? Well, as you know, I love Fringe beyond all human comprehension. Um, I think uh, Ultimate Fighter is having a great season on Spike. <laughs> I can see, <laughs> see the glances of everybody. See the eyes. Is this a dream right sequence? Right I, think, I think Dalton... Is this a dream sequence? You, you, Dalton, you're the only person who can appreciate that there's a fighter named Bruce Leroy on this show who wins every <laughs> match he's got. But... The best show right now on TV is The Good Wife. It's great acting, it's great writing, and I also love the fact that I can champion a big, fat, mainstream hit on a stodgy network like CBS. I agree. I, I mean, I really agree. I, 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 I love Modern Family. I feel like it's not quite as strong as last year. I feel Good Wife has gotten stronger in season two, and we talked about this the other week. I love Archie Punjabi, Scott Porter, what they're doing there, and yep. I really love what they've done with Carrie. Every character is so well serviced in every single episode. It's it's a kind of an amazing feat of writing and producing, I think. How about that parking garage scene with Archie and Scott? Mm. That was intense. I didn't know where they were going with it, but it was amazing. The way that scene was presented, I, I just instantly saw a thousand YouTube music videos being born <laughs> in that second when she was smashing that car up. I just thought it was great. Did you think they were going to kiss? Uh, no, no. Okay. I knew it was just God a big. Close. I knew it was just just a big tease yeah. on Kalinda's part. All right, let's go to the flip side of that, Ken. I want to know a show that you used to really love that you don't necessarily hate now, but a show that's just really been disappointing you lately in, in the creative direction it's been going. I would say Glee. Um, you know, when it first premiered, I thought it was really fresh and exciting, but now I think it's become so repetitive and didactic, I can barely stand to watch it. Another show is Chuck, which I used to think was like really Here we go. zippy and, you know, funny, but I just think this season is just like, so I can't stand Chuck's, you know, search for his mom, and everything's become so repetitive and trying to work all those cutesy characters in and Captain Awesome for another season. It's just, ugh. Ken driving a stake through Osceola's heart. Call. <laughs> driving a <laughs> stake, Osceola ready to walk I'm out I'm not seeing room. that. I, I can maybe see Glee has been a little uneven. Chuck, I feel like, is the same show that it was last season. I mean, not every episode is a home run, but uh, I think it's still solid. Solid? Yeah, I just think that there are too many plots, there are too many characters that they have to... It, it's it's the exact opposite of what I like about The Good Wife. I don't think the characters are being serviced well. They're being hauled in. It's like, oh, we haven't had a scene with, you know, Chuck's sister for a while, so let's get her in. It, it just feels very labored and kind of desperate. Hmm. I disagree. When you have this accretion of, like, so many subplots that 
just don't get resolved in any way week after week after week. I just find it very frustrating. I uh, find your review of the show frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I find your scoops frustrating sometimes. That's below the belt when you talk about the scoops. <laughs> All right, we, we talked about how this has been a very underwhelming season in terms of new shows. What is the one show this season that, that you like the most, Ken? Raising Hope. Raising Hope is like the only, week after week, I find it really funny. I think Martha Plimpton's fantastic. I think Greg Garcia, the producer, really has a main line on how lower middle class people live and can make that funny. But I mean, that said, it's no masterpiece, which I think it's a measure of how mediocre the season is that Raising Hope is the best I can come up with. I agree with that. It's when we first saw the pilots back in May, Raising Hope was that, sh that show you said, oh, it's pretty good. And yeah. then there were some other shows that we had you sort of excited by the pilots. And then as like the season's Lone going, Star. Like Lone Star or Nikita, which I know I liked more. I love the pilot Nikita. The episode two I thought was atrocious. And so by attrition, Raising Hope has really become the best show. Raising Hope is a show I added to my DVR just because I felt like after Lone Star got canceled, I should have something new on and, my DVR. So I was like, yeah, and to I, think I, that I that's, get behind this. Yeah, that's paired with Running Wild, which we oh kind of thought would be yeah. good and has proven to be really Winsable, yeah. if that's a word. Here's the hard question though. We're talking about how bad the season is. Then what would be the Ken Tucker call for the worst new show of the season? I always think Dancing with the Stars is a new show, so I oh. always think that's really bad. He's it's picking really... on everyone today. <laughs> Barrett, you're gonna take that? Was... Aren't you the one who posted a lot about Kate Gosselin's season? Oh, oh snap! <laughs> snap. <laughs> I, I did, there are only two things I like about Dancing with the Stars, Tom Bergeron and Annie's Recaps, which I read every word of. Have I made Good it up save. to you? For real, the, the worst show is probably Chase, and not even because it's a show I can hate, it's just I feel so sorry for it. I think it's a kind of pathetic show, and, <laughs> and, I, and I feel bad for Kelly Giddish, because I think she's probably, she seems pretty charming and a pretty good actress, and, but I feel like that's a show that sort of wants to be justified, and Kelly Giddish can't be Tim Oliphant. All right, we're talking about, uh, you know, actors on bad shows, but Ken, what great actor needs a get-out-of-jail-free card because they're stuck in an, just an awful role on an awful show? Maura Tierney on the whole truth. Poor Maura Tierney, I feel so bad. She's stuck every week with Rob Morrow, his permanent five o'clock shadow, his smirky grin. He's such and a ham sandwich on that show. <laughs> yeah. My God. And she just, I mean, when I think back on the pilot, the original pilot of Parenthood, as much as I love Lauren Graham and what she's done on Parenthood in that role, that Maura Tierney was originally cast in that role and that pilot was sent out to critics before Maura Tierney had her health problems and had to leave the show. She brought a real gravity and a real presence to that show that it breaks my heart to think that she's not still not in that show and <gasps> she, she deserves a good show. So you don't think Lauren Graham was an improvement? I don't think she was an improvement. I think she made the part her own. I do not want to be misunderstood here. I, I love <sighs> Lauren Graham and I think she does a really good job. but. I wish Maura Tierney was still in that show. I thought she she was a little too intense for that show, Maura. Like, I oh. felt like she was playing, like, an ER-level intensity on a show that's supposed to be light and whimsical. See, I think that's exactly what Parenthood lacks, is a certain intensity. I agree. I, I liked I, her in the pilot. It, it gets a little aimless these days, I think. All right, Ken, thanks so much for joining us. I'm going to let you and Asiello continue your Chuck and Parenthood cage match. Uh, on pay-per-view next week, I believe, we'll set up a special in a number, $29.95. You can watch these two go out. Ultimate Fighter. Let's move to the dance floor hey. live. Live. So he's like, though, you're going to eat a little crow right now. You're going to eat a little crow. Let's rewind. <sighs> One week ago, oh, I know. Mike Slezak sitting here ties Floris Henderson in final three. The rest of us, none of us were having it. You stuck to your guns. How does it feel now, yeah, can pretty I just boy? Say, no, 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 Let me just say, in my defense, no one said that she was going to be outfitted in a J.C. Penny uh, like nightgown. She was like in a J.C. Penny Christmas nightgown. I don't Christmas think that's what her downfall if that's was. her downfall. <laughs> Plus, she's the worst partner ever. Quirky <laughs> facial expressions during the tango. By the way, as Florence pointed out, she's like, you try doing a tango to the Brady Bunch theme. A. Mm -hmm. B. Mm -hmm. You've got Quirky's crazy fish face. C. She's in a J.C. Penny. There's no rhyme or reason. To it though, Bristol Palin is still in it. She was atrocious. There's no rhyme or reason. I did. I first of all disagree. I love anyone in a gorilla suit. I think the gorilla suit. <laughs> I, it wasn't the gorilla suit, but she wasn't. Suit. None of her dance steps were right. Fine, dress up in a costume. Her footwork was horrible. She didn't yeah. have dance steps. Who am I? Yeah, she moves. Yeah. She moves. What like... has happened to everyone? <laughs> we're getting very worked up. I, Annie's like a gas. I just can't believe anyone's even talking to me about dancing with the stars. What? Bristol moves like a human being, like a normal person. Uh, normal no. people are not as elegant and graceful as celebrities and athletes. But like now, it's time for her to go. I still think Florence Henderson was more awkward. I actually agreed with Bruno. He was jerking her around. Corky yes. on the ragdoll. Like, wasn't into that at all. Yeah, yeah. her well, head was getting like whipped back and forth. But yet, well, how let, old is she? She's 
practically Seven. dead. It's a little <gasps> bit like we can burn up there. How dare you? Hey, the aged, the aged. <laughs> <Just for that. laughs> You were just like, that. like a horrible, gets buzzed. Like, the man who killed ages. Sally Draper, Draper last week again is again. now trying to kill Florence Henderson. Yeah. And she's a real person. She's not a character. I like Florence. Come on. Now. I like that she was so passionate and excited about being on that show. Which is half the battle. Yeah. Like, why yeah. did Len hate Kyle and his Charlie's Angels dance, which was actually pretty damn good? I mean, you're asking them to dance to the Charlie's Angels theme, yeah. you're going to see some 70s hustle moves. It was a disco fever foxtrot. And I was totally infected. Totally bipolar. And I was like, infected with disco fever. Like foxtrot versus 70s moves, and they really made it work. They really made it work. I'm glad that the okay, viewers Tim came Gunn. to his rescue. Okay, well, let's talk Survivor now. A shocking double elimination, which actually wasn't that shocking. We knew that was coming. What was shocking is Marty plays a little poker here, decides not to use his hidden immunity idol. I was shocked. Didn't get sent home. I think it was shocking that he didn't play his immunity Idol. I thought every step of that tribal council was a shocker from the minute Brenda sort of came at him because she had him playing into her hand. Right. She didn't need to go after him and she basically put him on notice. Yeah, I don't like you. I don't like your game. Was that strategic? Was she trying to force him to play the immunity idol at that point? I think it might have been that. I think he might have been, she wanted to continue to draw a wedge maybe between him and Jane. But I also think part of it was personal. I yeah. think you're right. I think she just doesn't like him. So he doesn't use the idol. We get the 3-3 split. We know it's going to happen. We're all assuming now they're all going to vote Marty out, right? What, what were they thinking? Do you think that maybe she felt that, you know, Kelly B is just as dangerous and just as likely to flip on her? But flip to who? I mean, like, she might have maybe Benry and Alina on the <laughs> other tribe. But that's, that's, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? But she has no one to flip to. Marty is well more dangerous, and you can now get him out and get the immunity idol out. It's true, yeah, he does bring the immunity idol next week. She can't get rid of him next week unless she really, you know, pulls some machinations. Can I say too, I just gotta make a mention, did you notice that Nayanka talked about Dan's legs and she was like, he's gonna be down to nubs yeah. on his legs. Really? She he clearly has some kind of weird issue going on. Leg, well, leg fetish, it's a leg fetish. Brenda actually took on that Nayanka role of just having a supreme vendetta against Kelly B's prosthetic leg. No, well, you artificial know what? I, I don't. I don't agree with that. I, I think that Brenda, she says, I'm worried she's going to get the sympathy vote because of the leg. It's, yeah. it's purely in terms of that. She doesn't have hatred for her <laughs> and the leg. She just sees it as a strategic tool. It could tool. turn into that. She turn could turn into, into that. that. I didn't really think about, though, the, the Nayanka Dan thing. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah, she said nubs with a particular, like, rage. So maybe there's some psychological issue going on It's a on really there. good point that I just brought up. Do you feel like the season came back to life a little bit? I think people have been feeling it's kind of sleepy. Did it work for you? It was a little shot in the arm, which it needed. We've talked about the cast not being very likable. That's a problem. The other problem you have is that it was very predictable in terms of who was going home. And so I think everyone, when that council started, everyone thought it's Marty unless he's the idol. So it was surprising. And that's what you need. You need surprising to get that water cooler conversation back. The question is now, can it follow up on that? And um, we'll see. All right, let's call in Missy Schwartz to talk a little Project Runway. Let's bring her in right now. Missy, we're down to our final three now. Michael, a, a tearful, a tearful goodbye uh, last night. My question to you is, is this already in the bag for Mondo? Is there any possible way he loses. There really shouldn't be. If the world was fair, I am trying not to get my hopes up too high because this is the same three judges who rewarded Leanne, whatever her face is, from season six, season five, sorry. There's no way that he's going to lose to Andy. Andy's been not only just a little petty bitch all season, but... Oh! oh. No, we can't, we can't say that. Spicing it up. We can't say that on here. You haven't even gotten into the deep Vs. The deep V-necks combined with the hair situation is just too much for me. It's been a season really, really big on personalities and really, really low on fashion Ugh. quotient. I've hated the fashion Look, this season. Except for Mondo, I've hated everyone. Yeah. And if I have to look at another Gretchen, if this show had smell vision you would you would just smell B.O. on her clothes. It's <laughs> wow, like, yeah. Odorama. Yeah. But it's yeah. interesting, you guys are all complaining about the fashion, but for the first time since the show went to Lifetime, and this is the third season, people are talking about it. And I've always said this about all reality shows, it's 98% casting. Totally. And personalities. And when they get somebody like Ivy, who is nothing more than a seamstress, she's a horrible designer, and I hope she's listening. <laughs> the only reason this season is compelling for me is that Gretchen is just a whack job. She may be, t I mean, they all know how to make clothes, and that's pretty much all they have in common this season. Right. She has, orchestrated this little like Gretchen 
you know, in control world, and it has nothing to do with clothes. Can we talk about her hair too? The people on the on the message boards keep arguing about whether or not she has a mullet. I kind of think she has a mullet. She has like really thick bangs. Like, why are we talking about a little her bit hair? of a soccer rocker? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's like party in the. I think the bangs are bold. I, I, we, we can't go on like this. <laughs> I have to say, I've really enjoyed this season. I haven't enjoyed the fashion that much. I wonder if it's because they're giving them only one day yeah. to complete these looks. They don't seem to be giving them an opportunity to show their creativity. Although Mondo, bless his heart, I think has put down some really memorable outfits and he's just a total delight. He has just been crushing the competition. I mean, he was sort of- Because there's no competition. There is no competition. And the, the idea that we're even, we even have to entertain whether Gretchen is gonna beat him or not just like fills me with despair. He's so head and shoulders above everybody else. Yeah, but like- Conflicting still, patterns. Conflicting patterns. It's really hard to do conflicting patterns. It is, and he but does it's so well. Think. Conflicting patterns. Good morning, designers. <laughs> Welcome to the one way. Can you do some conflicting patterns for me today? Hello. Hello, I like it shiny and short. Let's get to the nitty gritty. It's gonna come down to the, the final collection. Missy Schwartz has seen the final mm. collection. She was there in <sighs> September when they, they walked him down the runway. So Missy, tell me what you saw, uh, who you liked, who you didn't like. Again, big surprise. I didn't like anybody but Mondo. I mean, Andy's, you know, not even worth talking about because he's never going to win. But it Whoa. was like, he had a lot of satiny silk things that played second fiddle to these weird, like, headdresses, fairy headdresses. Did any know. of his look like happy ending? No, there were no happy endings that I could that I could. Um, warrior, woman? Warrior, warrior woman. No, I think he that was successfully um, stamped out. And then Gretchen's, I kid you not, there were woven, washed out granny panties. That was the uh, motif of her collection. And I'm just like, how is this even possible? There was one look that was granny panties with like no no bra or shirt, but just like this weird pleather looking jacket. It was really bizarre. I, it was bizarre. It sounds made up. It sounds like Gretchen for Blair Witch or something. You know, there's just something about her that like feels very like made in the woods and, and like panties. smells damp. Tell us about Mondo's line. Mondo's was colorful, exuberant. It was joyful and it had like a little bit of for lack of a better word ethnic spin there was this bedazzled skull that was maybe a little Dio de los muertos that was my awesome spanish accent <laughs> <laughs> i loved it and i love his exuberance very tim gunn yes exuberance. Oh. Exuberance. i love it and there's no mm. chance they're going to not give it to him just for the shock of not giving it to him are they nina has for some reason harbored some sort of like for Gretchen all season, and Gretchen has been sucking it hard for the past, I don't know how many weeks. And she's had many, many circling the drain moments, but Nina has held out some sort of like for her. And the celebrity guest judge is Jessica Simpson, so. How dare she? Oh. How dare she? How dare she? <laughs> I don't even know what, how dare she was, but I'm just, I'm offended already. How dare she in general? So, Missy Schwartz, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank we you will for be shocked me. if we don't. Look at, I'll see y'all giving the slow clap. That's wow. all you get here. Thanks you know what? a lot. That Let's was exuberant. There you go. Is that better? Is that better? All right, get, get the f out of my office now. <laughs>